This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pussycat Mew from Mother Goose in Prose by L. Frank Baum. Pussycat, Pussycat, where do you go? To London, to visit the palace, you know. Pussycat Mew, while you come back again? Oh, yes, I'll scamper with might and with main. Pussycat Mew set off on her way, stepping quite softly and feeling quite gay. Smooth was the road, so she travelled at ease, warmed by the sunshine and fanned by the breeze. Over the hills to the valleys below, through the deep woods where the soft mosses grow, skirting the fields with buttercups dotted, swiftly our venturesome pussy cat trotted. Sharp watch she kept when a village she neared, for boys and their mischief our pussy cat feared. Oft she crept through the grasses so deep to pass by a dog that was lying asleep. Once, as she walked through a sweet clover field, Something beside her affrightedly squealed, and swift from her path there darted away a tiny field mouse with a coat of soft gray. Nowhere, thought our pussy, is chance for a dinner. The one that runs fastest must surely be winner. So quickly she started the mouse to give chase, and over the clover they ran a great race. But just when it seemed that pussy would win, the mouse spied a hole and quickly popped in. And so he escaped, for the hole was so small that Pussy Cat couldn't squeeze in it at all. So softly she crouched, and with eyes big and round, quite steadily watched that small hole in the ground. This mouse really thinks he's escaped me, she said, but I'll catch him sure if he sticks out his head. But while she was watching the poor mouse's plight, a deep growl behind made her jump with a fright. She gave a great cry and then started to run as swift as a bullet that shot from a gun. Meow, meow, our poor puss did say. Bow, wow, cried the dog who was not far away. Or meadows and ditches they scampered apace, or fences and hedges they kept up the race. Then Pussycat Mew saw before her a tree and knew that a safe place of refuge twould be. So far up the tree with a bound she did go, and left the big dog to growl down below. But now, by good fortune, a man came that way and called to the dog who was forced to obey. But Puss did not come down the tree till she knew that the man and the dog were far out of view. Pursuing her way, at nightfall she came to London, a town you know well by name. And wandering round in byway and street, a strange pussy cat she happened to meet. Good evening, said Pussy Cat Mew. Can you tell in which of these houses the queen may now dwell? I'm a stranger in town, and I'm anxious to see what sort of a person a real queen may be. My friend, said the other, you really must know it isn't permitted that strangers should go inside of the palace, unless they're invited. And strange pussy cats are apt to be slighted. By good luck, however, I'm quite well aware of a way to the palace by means of a stair that never is guarded. So just come with me, and a glimpse of the queen you shall certainly see. Puss thanked her new friend, and together they stole to the back of the palace, and crept through a hole in the fence, and quietly came to the stair which the stranger pussy cat promised was there. Now here I must leave you, the strange pussy said. So don't be afraid, cat, but go straight ahead, and don't be alarmed if by chance you are seen, for people will think you belong to the queen. So pussy cat Mew did as she had been told, and walked through the palace with a manner so bold. She soon reached the room where the queen sat in state, surrounded by lords and by ladies so great. And there in the corner our pussy sat down, and gazed at the sceptre, and blinked at the crown, and eyed the queen's dress, all purple and gold, which was surely a beautiful sight to behold. But all of a sudden she started, for there was a little gray mouse right under the chair where Her Majesty sat, 
and Pussy well knew she'd scream with alarm if the mouse met her view. So up toward the chair our pussycat stole, but the mouse saw her coming and ran for its hole, but Pussy ran after, and during the race a wonderful, terrible panic took place. The ladies all jumped on their chairs in alarm. The lords drew their swords to protect them from harm. And the queen gave a scream and fainted away. A very undignified act, I must say. And someone cried, Burglars! And someone cried, Treason! And someone cried, Murder! But none knew the reason. And someone cried, Fire! They are burning the house! And someone cried, Silence! It's only a mouse! But Pussycat Mew was so awfully scared by the shouting and screaming, no longer she dared to stay in the room. So without more delay she rushed from the palace and scampered away. So bristling her fur and with heart beating fast, she came to the road leading homeward at last. What business, she thought, has a poor country cat to visit a city of madmen like that? Straight homeward I'll go, where I am well fed, where mistress is kind, and soft is my bed. Let other cats travel if they wish to roam, but as for myself, I shall now stay at home. And over the hills and valleys she ran, and journeyed as fast as a pussy cat can, till just as the dawn of the day did begin, she safely at home stole quietly in. And there was the fire with the pot boiling on it, and there was the maid in the blue checkered bonnet, and there was the corner where Pussy oft basked, and there was the mistress, who eagerly asked, Pussy cat, Pussy cat, where have you been? I've been to London to visit the queen. Pussy cat, Pussy cat, what did you there? I frightened a little mouse under her chair. End of Pussycat Mew.